Hey everybody, thanks for watching. I'm Chris. I wish I were speaking to you under happier circumstances, but J.K. Dobbins is out for the year with a torn ACL, and so we're left wondering, okay, what's left behind? You know about Lamar Jackson's running, you know about Gus Edwards potentially taking on a big role. We're here today to talk about what the Baltimore Ravens rush offense might wind up looking like. Here's what we had last year. Basically already a three or four way mishmash with quarterback Lamar Jackson, actually the dude who led the team in rush attempts while Dobbins as a rookie worked in frustratingly slowly barely played the first couple of months. Mark Ingram became phased out and Gus Edwards produced decent numbers too. With, I, think, I think that tells us something about the effectiveness of the Baltimore system for rushing attacks and also that Edwards is a pretty good player. It's worth noting that 33 catches among all these running backs, Justice Hill also had five. That is a very, very low number. Despite the fact that we think Dobbins would be a heck of a pass catcher, that just has not been the Ravens' offense. Just a few words and a little bit of film about Rob Dobbins himself and what the Ravens are going to be missing. The answer is speed. You know Lamar Jackson is fast. Dobbins also very fast. Here we see him earlier in his rookie year, outrunning number 91 there, a defensive end who should have him, but no chance. Dobbins goes around the edge and turns it upfield. And it's hard to watch a play like this and not see it. Speed and change of direction. Yes, it definitely winds up being a nice hole, but Dobbins makes the most of it, as you see. Uh, when he plants his left foot, keeps his momentum going forward, doesn't slow himself down, and he's through the hole, and there we go. Electric acceleration, electric change of direction. And for good measure, get up in the hole, protect the ball, find the crease, and then stiff arm a linebacker right in the chops. He's little, but he's pretty strong, and he's off to the races, and... You know, he's, he's the guy, or at least last year he was the guy. He gets into the clear. You can stop watching the tape. He is going to score. But we know that Dobbins is going to miss the entire season with that torn ACL. And so, yeah, we're going to talk about Gus Edwards, who's a good player, but not all running backs are created equal. There are people who will say, doesn't matter. Workload goes to him. Workload goes to him. It's all the same. Well, let's take a little bit of look at Gus Edwards' film and see if we agree. Edwards gets to run behind the same offensive line we just saw Dobbins be really good behind. It is a really good offensive line. Edwards isn't as fast to or through the hole, but the point with him is what comes at the end of this play. We're not taking evasive action when we're 240 pounds. We're absolutely bringing the hammer and making the poor goofball safety question his life decisions. Watch it at the end there again. Justin Reed pummeled and hanging onto one foot for dear life. And just for a contrast of what it looks like when that good Ravens offensive line gives you a crease, here's Edwards running his own play. Watch what it looks like when he cuts back. That's not horrible on the left foot, but it's not a sharp cut like the one we just saw from Dobbins, but he makes it up through the hole. And it's got to be terrifying when you see him coming at you. But here you see Edwards wants to go left. He wants to go right. He doesn't really have a hard cut on the dead run. It's not in his arsenal. It's understandable. 240 pounds. You know, you want to change direction but you just sort of flump to the ground. But let's not say he never cuts. He just looks a little bit like a Clydesdale when he's doing it. He scoots through a giant hole here and gets in the open field and sees a corner coming to tackle him. He slows down as he sidesteps. But yeah, in this case, it's good. It works well, and he makes the man miss and keeps going. And on this one, you'll see as Edwards gets the corner, well, he needs about three or four footsteps to slow himself down. He's just, he's not Dobbins. That's no sin. It works here. And when he gets to the second level, actually, and sees a safety coming, that's a real good cut off of one foot. Makes the guy miss and keeps going. So we're not going to say he never does it. Hey, a quick break to say we're sponsored again by Fantrax. Fantrax is free to play fantasy football, and it's the most customizable site around. Any scoring, any format, any bonuses, contracts, dynasty, anything you got, Fantrax will make it happen. And they want you to try it so badly, they are putting on a best ball league for our viewers that I am in. And lots of you will be in. They're putting up a thousand bucks to the winners. 
Come play against me and lots of other viewers in a great big best ball league. It's free to play. You could win a chunk of change. If you don't have a Fantrax account, go to Fantrax.com slash Harris to make one and then click on the link that we've got in the show notes. Pick your team and you'll be playing against me and maybe winning some money. Fantrax.com slash Harris to make that account. Then click the link below to enter our best ball contest. Good luck to you, but not too much luck. Okay, we're back, and it's not going to be earth-shaking news to tell you that J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, they're not the same guy, right? They're not the same player. Edwards inheriting a workload means that he's a much more important player for the Ravens' offense. If you're a fantasy football player, Gus Edwards is a much more important fantasy player, too. I wanted to spend some time thinking about what the effect of Dobbins not being in there and Edwards potentially being in there more might be on the Ravens' terrifying, frankly, rushing option attack, because let's face it, that's the thing that rushing attack does very best. What you're seeing here are the stats, these three main Baltimore rushers compiled on Ravens option plays in 2020. Clearly, again, Lamar is the man with option keepers. He's awesome. But here we see a little bit of separation between Dobbins and Edwards. And in fact, look at these numbers and realize that Dobbins didn't play that much at all in the first seven weeks of the season. And it just makes sense that the speed player is more effective on an option play when in order to make the thing work, the quarterback and the running back sort of have to be kind of standing still or at least going in slow motion when they mesh point and then they both have to accelerate away from each other. Here are some Dobbins option plays. Now I admit some of the Ravens option plays aren't that far removed from just handoffs, right? But where... Lamar Jackson just sprints away and he's hoping to keep someone on the defense honest when he actually does hand it off. But in all of these cases, yes, the fact that Dobbins can accelerate or just is real fast when he's on the dead run, that accentuates the success if and when Lamar gives him the ball and if and when Lamar keeps the ball. By contrast, it's not black and white, but there's less explosion off these handoffs with Gus Edwards and instead He's left to win by being a really, really strong guy who crushes people, which is an awesome thing to be and is very useful. These are good runs. They are. I'm not showing you stuffs. I'm not trying to pick and choose and make one guy look better, one guy look worse. Not terrible foot speed by Edwards, and he can crush people with ill intentions when he gets to the end of a run. But you'll see what I mean on this last one. When the ball goes in the running back's belly, both guys hesitate. And it's probably a little easier to catch up to Gus Edwards as he keeps going than it would be someone like J.K. Dobbins. How about some numbers that portray the effectiveness of Baltimore's option rushing attack when Lamar keeps it? Well, I think this backs up my assertion, doesn't it? Numbers lie a lot. This doesn't mean Lamar is doomed in 2021 without Dobbins. He's a great runner. He's the fastest quarterback in the NFL. He will no doubt keep making great plays with Dobbins not around. But I think it's silly to say that nothing changes with Dobbins out. You're running a play that's by its nature designed to confuse the defense, but you're doing it with a less confusing player. Gus Edwards is a less confusing player than J.K. Dobbins. There is a trickle-down effect. This right here is the only 20-plus yard rushing gain of Jackson's season in 2020 that was an option keeper with Gus Edwards on the field. And you know who else is on the field? J.K. Dobbins. He's actually the one getting the fake option handoff here. Edwards is the one playing behind them and never sniffs the ball. And I'm sorry, Jackson had a whole bunch of long runs on option keepers when Dobbins was on the field. Here's a red zone option keeper for Lamar Jackson where Gus Edwards is on the field. The Chiefs, first of all, just play it well. If I'm factoring in one thing here, it's not that Gus Edwards somehow didn't scare anyone, and that's the only reason the defense keyed on Lamar Jackson and shut it down. Mostly it was a good play. But if we watch it back, let's freeze it at the mesh point. We see Lamar is looking at number 51. It's a read. He's going to try and figure out which way number 51 is leaning, and he's going to try to go the opposite way. And number 51, that's, I believe, Michael Dana. He'll stay home for a second. And then as we watch it roll, watch number 22, Juan Thornhill there. He's really shot out of a cannon and he goes and he gets Lamar. And if we watch the same play from the side view, you can see Thornhill pre-snap and he's basically spying. He's going to go where Lamar goes. And yeah, it's the combination of number 51 and number 22. And that really shuts this play down for three yards. 
Now, same game, and this is a Dobbins play. It's not a perfect comparison, I admit, right from the start. It's not a perfect comparison. They're not in the red zone. The defense isn't as compressed. Frank Clark, number 55, is playing where we just saw Michael Denna playing, left defensive end. You can say he just didn't play it as well. I get it. It isn't automatically because Dobbins is the one on the field. But watch Frank Clark react. He instinctively jumps a step inside. And by the time he figures it out, he's in the wrong place. And there goes Lamar. Let's try it again. Here's an option keeper with Edwards in the backfield. Dobbins is actually going to do some ghost motion behind them. But watch the reaction on the faked handoff when it becomes a keeper. We are not buying this stuff. Watch number 45. See him, see Edwards, maybe get the ball and just not react. Nobody reacts. It's almost as if the threat of Gus Edwards running parallel to the line of scrimmage doesn't scare a defense. Number 45 is good-looking rookie, first-round linebacker from last year, Kalevon Chiasen, and that's a really good play, right? And the same game, here's J.K. Dobbins in the backfield running the same play. Watch Miles Jack, number 44, react and go take steps to go get Dobbins. Watch number 47, Joe Schobert. Well, he actually does the right thing and stays home, but actually gets blocked to the outside. But there's more room in the middle because Jack vacated looking at Dobbins, and Lamar can cut it up inside for a bigger gain. I'm not saying the Ravens' option game is doomed because J.K. Dobbins is gone. I'm sure some of what we saw earlier with those stats is statistical noise, and Edwards getting more chances to run this offense will wind up making his numbers and Lamar's numbers look better. My point is that Dobbins being out affects everything. Losing the only real speed and quickness threat you had in the backfield can gum things up some. It's still going to be an effective run game, I think. For fantasy, I... I'm still taking Lamar Jackson. He's a really good quarterback. He belongs in the top five. Gus Edwards should probably be a fourth rounder. I'm okay. We've heard Tyson Williams might surpass Justice Hill. That's fine, but Tyson Williams isn't quick either. Unless they have Justice Hill playing or unless they get a free agent, they're probably not going to have a speed threat in that backfield. So I actually do think that the Ravens might add somebody else at running back if they're not into Justice Hill as their speed threat. And as of our making this video, they hadn't done so yet. We're actually recording this on August 31st, NFL cut down day. So it's possible that someone like Duke Johnson gets signed or the Ravens wind up finding another speed guy. But having watched this film, I have to say it was pretty stark. I think it can work with Gus Edwards. What really makes that Ravens uh, rushing attack and especially the option attack tick, it can work with Edwards. I don't think it works as well, especially when the running back is running parallel to the line of scrimmage. I don't think it's as an effective out of a rush attack until there is another speed perimeter quickness type threat. This is a serious blow with J.K. Dobbins out. Thanks so much for watching. Please, please, please smash that like button, write a comment, tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on, and of course, best of all, please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video.